Surf's up guys, it's Maui Snake here, and today we've got Ancient, we've got Simple, we've got Gambit, we've got the newest map, we've got the best player in the world, and we've got the best team in the world. Do I even need to say anything more? I will, because that's the point of the video. But the, the main point of this is that Simple went crazy. Uh, he had a pretty rough opening game on Ancient against FaZe, where his team got zero rounds on the T side. I actually watched some of that one back, and you can see that Navi are playing a lot better now. Uh, there's a multitude of reasons, but Simple is is one of them. Uh, he, he had a really great uh, CT side. You can see here, 24 kills, uh, only 11 deaths, plus 13, 112 ADR. You guys have eyes. You can see what's going on here. A uh, lot of first kills on top of that. And if you look at it, actually, on Ancient, his T side, he went 10 and 5, 149 ADR. And on CT side, 14 and 6. I mean... Crazy stuff. Let's get into it. I don't even need to explain anything anymore, but we'll see how he plays. Pistol round, though, not much to talk about here. He just dies. I will uh, I will just preface that. He rotates back to mid, and Axile kills him. And T-Simple. That's pretty much it. Uh, thankfully, that's not how the whole demo looks. Second round, he's going to actually push down mid after losing. And what's cool here, really quickly, is that the setup that Gant Navi decided to use is basically Simple is going to be responsible for this entire part of the map as bit rotates. And you'll see that Simple is just watching towards middle at this point because he can just, he's comfortable holding everything with a deagle apparently. And his teammates were able to stack towards B. So. Pretty comfy setup, thanks to the fact that they give simple, simple so much responsibility here. And then he rotates on in, and his teammates uh, pretty much finish everything off here. Uh, just kind of playing the, the trade game, but waits for his teammates. And they secure quite a few guns, so good stuff. And that's the power of having of letting a player like Simple just have a lot of responsibility like that. Actually, Bit didn't actually get there in time, but I'm sure they had the confidence knowing that it was going to be a quick... Uh, quick rotation in case anybody dies so early on here we're going to be seeing simple just holding down mid this is pretty much his spot on the map in this top mid temple i think people have been calling this candles people have been calling it red room i uh, i kind of like temple i feel like it gives it more value but people have been calling the back a part temple so i think i think red room is a very fair name because it's the only room with red and candles is really good too although i think there's candles in a couple other places so we'll see that he's just kind of jiggling towards mid the a execute comes out and he knows that there's a chance that gambit are a little bit lurky on it but as the full exit comes in he goes for some spam through the smoke there actually finds the assist onto axel good crosshair placement from him and he actually finds that there's a, a, some lurk potential here and then he decides to swing on through the smoke the problem is that he kind of had a delay there. Uh, once he got that first kill, he actually strafed into this wall. Uh, just a little bit of lacking in map awareness. And I think he actually po he kind of locked himself here briefly. So he couldn't strafe out in time to get the second frag. And by then, the, the planter was able to recover and then uh, was able to take him out. So uh, it's still, still a good round from him. Uh, did a lot of damage. Actually did about... 150 something damage because he didn't do any damage in the previous rounds, but now he's sitting at 150 or he's sitting at 57 ADR. So, round number four here, we're gonna see a uh, push down the middle, and this is pretty much a farm round. This is a round that that Navi like to let Simple have, where they know that Gambit is almost surely on Glock, so they just let him have a SMG, and he's able to farm the cash for an op moving forward. So you see that he just gets really aggressive here, and watch how Inters kind of peaks this. Uh, he still has pretty good awareness, but Simple's just too fast. And that's just that's just the benefit of having Simple on the team. Um, plus, it's an anti-eco, so really not too much to say. And the thing is that Simple doesn't just stay in that same spot. He kind of hangs out, but it's slightly jiggling the corner. It's an anti-eco. Like, it's nothing, it's nothing too insane there, in all honesty. But this is a round where I actually thought that Navi might be doing their homework. Uh, they actually look like they're anti-stratting here because no one runs this setup on the first gun round. And what you're going to see is a 2-1-2. And that is very rare. Uh, I don't know why I drew it like that. But 2-1-2. Look at this. There's two players A to start a round. And the way that they're setting up is that Simple is actually kind of playing A main alongside Bit. And what th they're both watching these two angles for any person pushing into this A main area. 
And this is a really cool read because Gambit are a very defaulty team and they rely a lot on Axile and Hobbit in rounds to find kills on the extremities. It's something that Yumi and I were talking about on the Snake and Banter podcast. And actually, that's exactly what Gambit do. They don't actually look for that early mid control. They look for some picks, some openings on the extremities. And actually, they find those kills in tandem, stereo frags, as Bardoff likes to call it, as they get both players lurking, Axile and Hobbit. They're both trying to push forward, and it doesn't work out for them. So now Simple just holds the line towards Cube. He actually smokes off A main to disguise the fact that Bit is still there. Might make Gambit think that, you know, A main's clear, that they can get a uh, just get in there for free, but no, Bit's in there. And he's just holding this at this point, and really the full play is towards B, so there's not too much to worry about as the rest of his team's able to clean this one up. So round number six, we're going to skip most of this one. It's just pistols. Uh, one thing to talk about is that he hits that molly there. I'll, I'll maybe talk about that more on a gun round. This round is actually pretty pretty lackluster, so we will we will zoom through it. Zoom, 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 zoom. Uh, Gambit begin to take cave, and then they actually pressure towards the B site. So Simple rotates on over. And this is where he finally kind of meets a little bit of action. They're still unsure, though. They're still unsure. He could have met some action there, but actually uh, they rotate all the way back towards A. Simple actually misses the upcoming shot here, which is kind of a sitter, but it shows that even the best players in the world don't hit every single shot. I was being pretty, pretty critical of Guardian in that demo review. But, you know, even Simple misses some shots, so... That's, uh, that just happens, and then his teammates are able to clean that one up. Just kind of caught in rotation that whole time. Uh, it's one where it seemed like Navi just didn't have a great idea about where... That's the reason I show it. Um, just didn't have a great idea about where Gambit were uh, for a lot of that round. And we're going to watch Simple actually hit that Molotov a couple times, so I'll show that. But rotates into, into B uses a flash from his teammate in order to peak that angle, but Shiro just takes the shot, immediately knows that he's not favored in that duel, so if anyone immediately swing, maybe he can hit that shot, but he doesn't want to linger over there, give up his life for free, uh, of an experienced move from Shiro. But what's cool about this round is that Simple actually rotates into cave after rotating from middle so that he can support Boomage, and he takes a pretty much a 50-50 fight against Hobbit right here as the smoke is fading, doesn't hit the player through the smoke, but what he does now is kind of selfish, I will say but it could have helped boomage it does help boomage out but what you'll see is that boomage um has to dodge this flash that simple throws and the reason simple throws it is because he wants to peek out to throw the smoke but he doesn't actually strafe wide enough and so he actually puts boomage in a smoke the smoke lands on top of boomage as a matter of fact so boomage being the sneaky snake that he is actually just sits in caves here and instead of Instead of actually leaving, he just stays and waits for the smoke to fade. But you'll see, uh, he will get the kill there uh, as the smoke fades. But what, what's cool, what's also cool about this round is how Navi stay proactive. They keep keep actually trying to battle back Gambit in this round. So what's going to happen is they go for a setup towards the ramp here. And that's actually really the highlight of this round, that Electronic and Perfecto, as the smoke fades, they both go for peaks simultaneously, and they're able to get a few kills. Simple actually doesn't do anything in this round, although the smoke that he threw did set up Boomage, although I think that was by accident. I don't think that was by design. So, round number eight. Uh, this is kind of a mess up round for Simple, where he, he actually doesn't have great, you can see how he ha doesn't have great nade procedures for this map, because what he throws are some very bad flashes, and I will show you how to throw better ones, but look at what Simple does here. Look at the situation first. So Electronic is kind of in these back lanes towards B right now. He wants to move up to peek out this kind of sunny side towards the, the giant structure, and what Simple does is he throws a running flash, run two running flashes, deep into that corner right there. And those are just very bad for a couple of reasons. Um, they're going, well, the, the main and most obvious reason is look at where look at where these players are for, for Gambit, mostly Inters and Hobbit. They aren't actually getting that blind from this. This actually doesn't really blind him. And Inters is able to find the headshot onto Electronic. Hobbit's able to finish it off. And... And then, and then Navi are basically just locked out of the round at that point. They really have no op... Uh, they, they can try to keep battling back, but there's so many players here, and despite the fact that they get three for two, it's not quite enough, and Hobbit actually gets the ace in this round. And so that's just going to be him playing the 1v1 as he peeks out to kill Boomich. But if you actually want to throw a good flash here, I have learned that 
uh, kind of, if you stand on the very edge of the sun right here, and you aim at the top left of this right here, you will basically throw a perfect pop flash that lands right here. And if you don't want to blind your teammate at all because he's going to swing right into it and you don't trust the timing, then you do the same thing, but you just aim to the left. So you kind of align your crosshair with the top of this, and then you just kind of move it out over here. So that's a very simple way to throw a retake flash towards the back lanes right there. So that's um, in case you were wondering. And then simple misses, I think, the Molotov again. Uh, this isn't really a nade channel, but... Or no, he doesn't. He doesn't miss it this time. Actually, he doesn't throw the nade. But, but he has some trouble with throwing the nade, and uh, I could explain that one later. But basically, in round number nine here, uh, this is simple. Just playing a solo mid, and it, it shows just how powerful this cube position is. I will not call it the other name that people are using, but cube is very satisfactory. But he's just holding the line here. Uh, the T's can actually peek on top of this railing if you're not really familiar with Ancient. So that's a pick that he's going to find as Nafany tries to make his way out. Notice that Simple is actually kind of holding in the middle of these two angles so we can either flick down or up. That's just what you get when you have Simple on your team. You just have a guy that can just flick like that. And so Nafany actually throws out a little bit of an elbow there, and that's just all Simple needs. So he's able to get that one. But he knows he lost control of mid. He knows that Inters could have swung out, or anybody for that matter, could have swung out to get to red room. And because of that, he has to pick up that position now. But they're really on the back foot here. Navi have control of cave, but they don't really have any space towards A right now. And they think that the play is going on towards B. And one of the reasons I think Hobbit is just one of the best players for Gambit, if not the best, is because he's able to find this pick here. He's able to get these, these kills, and it just forces the rotation from Simple and Navi. And this is why I think Hobbit is just probably the best player. Like, like for Gambit. I, like, there's so many games, even though he doesn't win the MVPs, that's always Axile and Shiro, when in a 4v5 situation, like I said on Snake and Banter with Thorin, like, it's Hobbit that does, just finds these dry peaks, and he just wins in these just mid-round default kind of situations. So, Simple just has to save at this point, nothing for him to really do, you can see the spot that he's saving at, but in round number 10 here, he throws the good molly. So, you're going to see the lineup here, actually, I'll try to slow it down. You'll see that the way you aim it is you kind of hug this left wall right here, and you aim that you see that vine that he's throwing at, you have to aim right beneath the leaf. If you aim too low, it'll hit a wall, but if you aim right kind of in between, like where Simple's letting it go right there, that's a really that's a really solid spot, and it uh, actually leads to a pretty consistent Molotov. So you'll see that it lands right where he wants it, and then he throws a nade on top of that in case anyone tries to push through. So then he takes position towards the left side of mid in the other kind of cubby here, and... I kind of am willing to call this sandbags because it resembles cash so much in the way that kind of people play it. But he wants to hold this position towards middle. Actually had a chance to find that kill on the player coming out mid, but just doesn't have the timing. Wants to throw the smoke. Knows that A has been exposed for a long period of time, so decides to play a more passive setup. And Hobbit, once again, just kind of finds a double entry on his own. Actually, a triple entry. And they lose. And Navi just lose. Like, that. that's the round. <laughs> like, is this guy not the best player? For, for Gambit. Like, what? what is that? No, I know. Axel, ha Axel has a lot of rounds, too. Okay, Shiro has some great great rounds as well, but, like, he just manhandled that whole site. It's a shame we're not even looking at him in this game. That's something for you to do. If you want to do some homework and see how Hobbit just handles that entire... The hardest part of this map by himself. Watch Hobbit in this one. But we just went over Hobbit in another game. So, not going to do that right now. So, round number 11, uh, Simple decides to play a slightly more passive setup towards middle, where he doesn't actually fight for it. Boomich is the one that's responsible. Simple knows that it's, he, it's possible that they actually do... Uh, uh, that, they, that they might want to hit B again, because Hobbit has just been handling that side so easily, so that it's really nice to put up an op in that kind of position. So Simple, with great timing, just finds a kill through the smoke, and then just plays a passive spot. And, like, this is another area where I would think it's kind of called candles right like why i don't know why why this is like been called cave or temple but this is kind of like Ru i think ruins has been the next best name i've heard for this spot actually ruins because it's very much broken in so many positions so simple just kind of moves out gets one in the back right there as his teammates are creating pressure swings out to try to kill hobbit doesn't actually connect but just a really good rotation from simple in this one so uh 
mostly just kind of good game sense. So once again, throws the molly beneath the leaf. That will work, as a matter of fact. And then here's... I think, I, I think he has to hear some kind of calm that they're a communication, a call from his teammates that there's something happening towards B because he just rotates on over very quickly and he wants to set up Perfecto, so he throws a flash right above. Although, and Perfecto is able to clear out this space now, gives him so much room to work with. Simple's actually pushed up behind Perfecto at this point, so they're able to double up. Perfecto is able to throw a smoke because of that. And now this becomes a very just straightforward fight for them as they can just push on. Uh, they know that Hobbit is still here, so they throw a double flash to try to get him out. And Hobbit actually still wins it, but look, look at, like, Navi are actually very thorough here because they had Electronic coming out of Cave simultaneously to make sure that that would all work out. But Simple actually whiffs a close range shot onto Axile, and that costs his team pretty dearly as they lose the round in what was a, I think, 3v2 briefly. Uh, becomes a 2v2 into a round win for Gambit. So, round 13 here. This is a risky mid setup from Electronic and, and Simple. Uh, I'll explain briefly how this works and why it is so risky. So, what they actually end up doing is they have a molly for this Tetris position early on. And the way that this works is that Simple is holding the smoke for Electronic as he tries to get up towards Tetris now. And this, this can work pretty well if no one's hiding in that smoke, because if anybody is dry, fa like faces Electronic because they just sit in the smoke right there and the smoke fades, Simple does not have an angle on them. And you'll see that right here that basically simple can't see this this deep cubby to the right and so if electronic if anybody were there electronic would die but they just tr they just have to assume that nobody's there he, he's still holding it but it's it's a probably a losing fight if they have a rifle to be honest even of a with a player of electronics caliber it's it's still very difficult so they actually kind of make the setup work in this the little one two punch that they have but there's a little bit of misdirection towards A, and it seems like Simple doesn't want to hold this setup for much longer, and that leaves Electronic out to dry, because now Gambit do take that space back, although he does move back in. He, he, I think they realize the call is there, but he doesn't have a great angle on this shot from Inters either, and Electronic was getting pinched from multiple sides, and if, if Simple doesn't hit this, he, did, he already missed the shot there, so Electronic would have died if Hobbit didn't just kill him. So that's that's kind of what happened because he got dislodged a little bit. He didn't have the, the opportune angle. Still is able to get the one onto Inters, but Gambit are just doing a late mid crunch, and that's why Simple, um, he, he just kind of got out of position. So I don't know what, if the, it kind of seems like the comms were a little scattered or panicked or that he didn't really believe that Gambit were doing. Whatever they did, faked him out is, is essentially what happened there. It faked him and Navi out. So round 14 here and this one we're going to go through pretty quickly because there's just he's able to find this kill on a hobbit this return as he tries to double up with perfecto in cave but he backs off of the angle and still wants to hold that position but he, he thinks that this is an a play for some reason or he wants to take he wants to retake mid control actually uh is the plan from navi which doesn't really work for bit he hits a great shot onto axile actually but that's it he's just gonna get smoked off and he's out of the round at this point there's, there's nothing for him to do so that's that one right there decides to save this made me a little scared because he decides to save against the the giant cube but if not if any actually strafes out he would be able to see him so this is kind of a risky a risky spot to save backing up in in cube might be better in terms of managing your angles a little bit but that's just something. That's a small detail. And this is actually a really selfless round from Simple. He, he throws his molly properly, holds onto mid for a while. The, the main play is towards B on this one, and he's able to do actually quite a bit of damage. I do want to show what Hobbit does here, though, because look at this jump spot that Hobbit's doing. And look at how Simple can't, can't connect with it. it. It gives Hobbit all the information that he wants, as Hobbit does it one more time. It, like, Hobbit is so crafty with these little jump spots that he's able to find that information, knows that Simple's op is over there, and it, it's able to help direct the kind of play that Gambit want to run. So double flash to take control of the space, but there's a molly on the ramp, so they can't actually push forward despite them burning a lot of utility, Navi that is. And then Simple decides that he might want to reclaim mid because they've lost a lot of vision on that spot, but in instead decides to just take the risk in fighting towards cave with electronic 
electronic swings out first simple actually misses on shiro and that kind of that that little hesitation in simple he doesn't go for the re-peak he waits for electronic who has the p250 to swing into shiro hoping that they can double swing into shiro and find the kill onto him but he's still unable to find the trade just kind of just slightly imperfect timings and spacings on these trades here is able is is what gets shiro that one for one and so shiro throws a flash simple counters with a smoke knowing that he was able to take this advanced position and this little battle for cave is actually really kind of cool the way that they're they're back back and forth on it it's just it's such a kind of claustrophobic area that kind of feels like apartments on inferno in that but it, it just feels like it's less spammable and there's a kind of there's actually a lot of cool room for utility especially with the sky boxes but simple just kind of backs up to the the main lane on on b he's able to hit the first shot onto enters decides to reroute interestingly enough and is able to get a kill onto hobbit who's boosted up on the boxes and now in a 3v2 situation you would kind of think that they, they can play this a multitude of ways but simple actually decides to be pretty selfless about it he finds the leg shot and that's a that's just a really fortunate timing for Axile as he swings out as Bit is throwing a flash for Boomich uh, and Simple to scale. So Axile just found the perfect timing there. And now Simple plays this as if he's looking for the jiggle, but knows that he's actually facing a left eye. He is actually at the least dominant angle right now. This will, th like this hold from Shiro is very favorable for Shiro because Simple is swinging out with a left eye peak. The gap right there also gives Shiro a little bit of a window that he can work with better. It's kind of almost a one way that favors the player on the bomb site because of the geometry and the distance from this corner, whereas Simple would be about this far. Shiro is this far. So he has a, he actually can see down and see the feet a lot better than anybody else so that is why simple actually opts for this play right here which is really selfless and shows how simple isn't always just looking out for himself but for the team victory so you'll see right here that he just goes for the jump out he was actually ready to just go for the selfless entry frag kind of swing out and he does it again actually um right here so we'll see how this looks from bits perspective how he's able to manage this because simple just works so selflessly he, he swings out and then bits just able to take that space and it's just good trading right there as they were able to work in tandem so pretty cool half from from navi there as they're able to get nine but what's really exciting is actually the second half but for a little bit of summary on what simple was able to do in that first half i mean he got he he got 14 kills, only six deaths, and he kind of was responsible for locking down mid, which he did okay. I think Gambit still were able to take space away, but that's what a tactical team like Gambit's always going to be able to do because they just have good nades. They are always going to be able to take space away from you because they just push you off of all the angles. And Simple was just really strong on any rotation, and that's kind of that's one of the factors in putting one of your best players towards mid is that he's going to be able to be in the fray when he chooses the right rotation. He's in the fray, he's in the action, he's able to get multi frags. So that's always going to be nice. So early on, Simple is actually a support player in this one. Misses the flash, but has a nade and a smoke here. And while his team is going for a fast play towards Cave, he's actually responsible for taking this space here towards uh, kind of ramp. And he throws a set smoke to actually land to cover off the back lanes to make this rotation a little awkward. Although the thing is that Navi didn't take that space, so the smoke becomes kind of useless actually. And I, I feel like I feel like once Navi play this map a little bit more, they're gonna realize that maybe use that smoke to re-smoke the primary lane because now Hobbit is out here. They're just past simple smoke, and that's probably something where they had the plan for it, but they didn't really recognize that we didn't take the space for it. So that's gonna be something where I'm sure they'll make that a little bit cleaner moving forward, or any team for that matter after they watch a demo such as this, or maybe they watch this YouTube video. Who knows? Who, who what, what pros are watching this YouTube video? Comment below. Thanks. <laughs> but Simple is actually responsible for watching the flank, but he doesn't really expect the big flank that Nafany, Nafany pulls out. So Nafany actually whips a couple shots, but he still is able to recover in time. And we'll just kind of look at the setup for, for Na Navi here, because they're in a three-on-three. Three. The Boomich goes for the big rotation there, but it's actually the cave players who do a lot of damage, and Boomich uh, actually doesn't even need to get involved. And it would have been pretty tough for him, because the bomb was actually planted on the kind of lanes not the lane side the the ct side of uh the pillar there so would have been tough but either way they're able to close it out simple is going to be throwing a cave smoke here it's, it's kind of a walk walk throw that lands right in cave 
and Gambit throw their own counter utility. So it actually kind of negates the nade that Simple throws, and you're going to see that really this is just kind of a battle for mid on this one, where they already smoked off cube and cave, so they really do want to take this space towards middle. And Simple kind of baiting right there, hoping that Electronic might get first contact, but they still actually take this space. And uh, it's going to be an A split that comes out from them in this round. Uh, him and Electronic just make their way through. This is not a duo you want to face in a room that's just painted red. <laughs> I feel like this would be the most frightening thing, just seeing these two there. And Inters tries to make a play through the smoke right there, which is a smoke that I think G2 first threw for A splits. But I think a lot of teams are starting to use that one now. Actually, I'm not sure if, if Navi threw that one on the fly, actually, so... But either way, they, they take all the space, they have all the right nades, and what Navi does so well in this game, and what made what, what it feels like they learned on their T side from the previous time that they played it against FaZe, is that you can't root you cannot you can taking A is not as simple as just going through A main. It's not like B on Dust 2 just like that because there's so many other avenues to gain access to it. You can go through Cube, you can go through CT Spawn, and even when you go through CT Spawn, you have two avenues to get into the bomb site. You can go through the short, kind of the shorter rotation spot, or you can actually go through the ruins. So, either way, uh, Navi learned an important lesson in phase, and they show that here because they take a lot more space. So, throws the cave smoke once again, goes for some position towards A main, and this feels like a play that we saw Kadian make with Heroic, the way that he worked through A main with an op, and then they just sent him out because he had the best firepower and can probably just contact him to the bomb site. but they, th they throw a lurk smoke actually, which kind of acts like a B lurk smoke because the way that this segments the site is that you can peek out on this side, or you can actually go for a boost behind it. So this gives you a lot of options, and I think this is going to be a pretty meta-defining smoke in terms of taking A if you don't have space elsewhere. It, it actually gives you kind of two routes as you make your way into the bomb site. So Navi actually throw that there. They begin to throw some utility to try to find some ground there, but there's just a flirt, a lot of smokes there, and it simply gets boosted up here, uh, kind of in the car position. I kind of call that just because it mimics the car position on uh, on Dust 2. Plants the bomb while spinning so that he can't get shot as easily, but doesn't really know where to play. Like, he's, he's kind of out in the open right here. It's, it's, it's kind of an off angle, and in a 1v3, you think that he would reload because this actually does come back to bite him. Nav Navani actually goes for this, and Simple doesn't hit every bullet, surprisingly, and so he actually dies, and this kind of costs Navi a lot in terms of uh, money, but because because Gambit are saving, it's not as big of a deal. But Gambit, once again, going for the aggressive smoke play down mid. But you'll see right then and there why it's not as effective to throw a smoke in that spot and why it's much better to throw a molly because there's no real fear that you can't just walk through that. So simple here uh, actually kind of goes for the reverse clear towards cave. No one peeks out at this point, but peeks checks back towards middle and Navi are in a weird state right now where they're all very separated, where Perfecto's all the way back towards B, uh, kind of the water area. Uh, Electronic has slotted himself into sandbags. And uh, what's his name? <laughs> Bit Bit is actually still all the way towards A. So, so really, this is a weird round for them that they have to try to recover. And so Simple decides that the way that he's going to do this is by just kind of holding for a while. And... And hoping that Gambit go for a push. Uh, they still have the, the the firepower advantage, so there's no real, there's no 100% necessary pressure that he needs to find a return kill. He'd rather just hold for something, kind of jiggle into these spots. And now that he's on his own, he actually decides that maybe he can find a timing in cave, maybe he can draw some misdirection, and that is the play of the round, if not the game. Gambit, we're going for a three stack towards A. P Simple drops his pistol towards Cave. And look at the rotations from Gambit now. Look at that. That is off of one dropped pistol. That is just... And you know that Axile is probably calling. They dropped the bomb towards Cave. Like, that is probably the call. And now Hobbit is left on his lonesome because Gambit's stacks in mid rounds to, to close out late round situations is one of their strongest tools and being able to actually unseat them by making them believe that it is the bomb being dropped is such a strong, it's just such a strong play. Uh, 
Simple gets zero kills in this round until until basically exit frags, and yet he does everything for them there. That is why, like, it's such a small thing, and it feels so gimmicky, but it has a chance of working, and that's why Simple does it. So, round number 20 here. Th this is going to be kind of a dry approach for Simple that then ends up costing him. They, they take middle in a pretty kind of normal fashion. They throw some flashes, they spam through the smoke, but uh, Simple gets blinded as they're trying to make their way up Red Room. Uh, Electronic got his got himself in sandbags, but this is uh, this is kind of simple just peeking into cave at this point, making sure that the angles are cleared. We'll clear out the left side with Boomich, and Boomich falls away from this, so you think that maybe Simple can just slot himself in, in Jaguar, but instead he just jiggle peeks into Shiro, who's holding with an op. So that's going to be uh, one of Simple's few bigger mistakes on this one here but it is one of those gambles where he's probably willing to take that risk if it's a rifle but instead he just decides that uh i mean i mean it's not that he decides anything it's that shiro decides that he's going to position there so round 21 this is uh this is this is navi showing that they want to keep gambit honest and one of the coolest things that stiko said on his kind of how to play ancient video with launders is that you need to keep teams honest by taking mid control uh, at any point in time. Late mid seems like the way a lot of teams want to go about it, and that's exactly what Navi do. They they molly out the sandbags area. They simple continues to hold Tetris. They just show some presence there. Nafani can't really stay for the fight, and even though Shiro has some eyes on this position, he's still worried that somebody might lurk in there, and the flash as well. Makes him realize that, you know, maybe something's possible. Boomich actually is the one that really contests it. And if we go back to Simple, he goes for a contact play into A, jumping on kind of the little plat platter, the plat position. I don't even know what I'm saying. Like the platform, the cave, or the, the car. I, I want to call it car, just because it resembles Dust 2 so much. And so they just push in here. And this is just, this is just such great procedures from Navi, because... The problem they also had with the phase game is that, and a lot of teams early on, is that they just wanted to plant at A. They just kind of felt like, you know what, we should be able to plant. That's how the bombsite feels, but you have to take space away. That's why they boosted up onto the sign. That's why they jumped over. That's why Simple now is swinging out wide to try to contest this position, because you need to take some space. And they actually triple fight CT spawn here and get two kills, and now it's a free bomb plant. And now Shiro has really no way into this round because you can still plant on this corner. Shiro has no angle here. He could maybe strafe to the right, but Simple knows that, so that's why Simple strafes out to try to catch him. And at this point, it's a round done. Just really good mid-late, like, late rounds from, from Navi right there. That is, that's something that just, teams are going to start copying them in the way that they are acting once they get onto bomb sites because it's, it, it, you need to you need to fight for something. If you just smoke off ruins, smoke off CT spawn, smoke off cube, and you plant on A, the one thing is you will probably get spammed and die. The second thing is that it's so easy for them to retake. They actually have four ways to peek out onto you. So you will die. You will not. There's no way to have crossfires good enough to hold that. You need to take ruins. You need to take CT or cube. You need just one of those three. It's like when you're playing a lot of maps, you need more than just the bomb site. And Symbol gets caught lacking right there a little bit. He uh, almost dies to an aggressive push from Hobbit, and that was a that was a pretty cheeky play from Hobbit. And when you're down, you know, seven to fourteen, it's nice to see that Hobbit is is still going for those kinds of aggro plays. But this is going to be a uh, late late round B hit. And it's a really good bomb site hold from from Simple. It's a little bit wonky. Uh, they they don't have any control towards the lane, so they think that potentially someone from Gambit is going to be here. So what they're going to do is flash through the doors to try to retake this lane space. No one's there. No one's home. They actually have given up all that positioning because they're in a 5v4, and Gambit really just play the fundamentals. They want to play the best crossfires. They always can. So Simple is just tasked with holding the ramp here, and the rest of his team is making their way through the cave. Simple gets mollied off, but he throws a flash into the bomb site that spurs the push, and... Simple just kind of holding the line, checking down both of the back lanes, the left and right lanes. Kind of a team flash right there, actually. Uh, throws his own nade. And then 
And then this is where Simple unlocks himself. In a post-plant situation where they're all on pretty low HP, their utility is running out, Simple decides that he wants to take fights to Gambit so they can't just use their utility and be comfortable on their entries. He wants to take the fights right to them. And notice that he uses the timing on the smoke being up. He actually thinks that it's it's fair to fight down this lane right now because he's going to get a 1v1 and he's the best player in the world. Why wouldn't he take it? So he actually catches Shiro out. His barrel is there and that's just a freebie for Simple. Then he actually decides, okay, do I want to push to the left or to the right? The smoke is still fading. This is probably a 50-50 with lower HP. It's a difficult fight, uh, but... He doesn't push into it, he just kind of holds, and Hobbit gets caught right there. Axile just made noise because he threw a flash, and this is Simple probably feeling himself a little bit. So, he just he just goes for the fight. He, he just takes the 50-50. And, you know what? That's what you can do when you're the best player in the world. Perfect crosshair placement, by the way. That first bullet right there, it looks so wide. He's not holding a, a close to the, the wall or anything like that. But he knows that Axile is probably going to be going for the wide swing if he goes for anything. That's just him reading Axile. Like, that's just a call out. And if Axile knew how badly he got destroyed right there, he would probably have to respect that a little bit. So this is going to be a B default into uh, a late B hit. There's not too much that Simple actually does here. Uh, he kind of goes for the boost. I think Naf Nafni stays alive on this Jiggle, uh, but he Simple does catch him uh, when he pushes on up a little bit. So throws a molly to pressure that area but he actually hits one of these clipping kind of areas where it's a corner that's just that's just weird i, I kind of wish these things weren't in the game i wish they were a little smoother because that just feels dumb honestly and no one's going to use that intentionally for any kind of cool play probably so this is nafany pushing on forward the timing there is pretty unreal but simple is just holds the line knowing that nafany may have got across i think that's one of the moments where the right radar would show a question mark to him but either way uh, he just pushes on forward once he smells blood it's over for Gambit. So, Simple kind of screws his team over with this smoke. Uh, actually, it it just has a huge gap. Uh, you need to have a better, more flush smoke in this situation because what that allows is for Hobbit to just hold the line and then he pushes through. And then what actually happens is it surprises Simple because why would someone push through that? But they're still able to win the post plant, and that's going to be it for the game. So, let's look at the stats really quick. As this is over... Simple, 24 kills, 11 deaths, 112 ADR, 30 utility damage, 8 flash assists, and all around a very solid performance from him. So that's going to be it, really, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is probably going to be the last demo review I do for a couple days, at least, So because I'm going to be flying back to Hawaii pretty soon, and I'm going to enjoy my time in LA now. So either way... Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Simple wasn't able to win today in the Blast Premier Spring Final, but he did show that him and Navi, they did a little bit of homework from the last time they played this map. So it was a really nice and pleasant sight. And who doesn't want to see the best player in the world play a new map, right? Okay, thanks, everybody. Uh, as always, being toxic is a choice.